somehow the closing PDA coil is almost historical. It's not true, because in most centers, people love to use Amplitzer family for PDA closure, large PDA, uh, ASD device, VSD device, and even for the smaller PDAs where the coil had a role, many people would use the newer Amplatzer devices for closure. And actually, Amplatzer uh, people are smart because they hit on the, they knew that the small PDA, usually the coil will be used. So they came up with this uh, ADO2, and then ADO, AC, etc. Still, I think uh, coils do have uh, some occasionally indication and are useful for many centers. Sorry, disclosure. So this is how it started. We started Porsman, Evalon Plug, then Rashkin Double, and they disappeared. This is the Nitoclude PFM coil, the detachable coil, and of course the Amplatzer. This is uh, the leader, no doubt. Now, at the time of Rashkin, we thought actually it's only Rashkin, there is nothing else. And then somebody came with the smart idea of using the Jan Turku coil, and it worked. And it was amazing because it doesn't look as if it could do anything. And we did this comparison, age and weight match group, 35 versus 35. And what we found out that total closure of Rashkin was only 51%. If you put, they had two devices, the 12 and the 17, and usually the 17 for the larger PDA, they had an extremely high rate of residual leak. Genturco coil, closure rate 86%. Embolization rate was a problem with the Genturco coil, but it was very cheap. By the way, this is two coils for $30. And then came the detachable coil, along with the uh, knit occlude, which came slightly uh, later. The detachable coil actually has been there, I think, since 1975, used for other things. And then uh, uh, Cambier came uh, to the glorious idea, why can't we use it for PDA closure? And it worked. When you look at it, it doesn't make sense, but it does work perfectly. Knowing from also other papers that Janturku coil has quite high rate of, uh, of uh, um, embolization, when they cook detachable, we just were interested to see whether there is a difference, and we found a difference. That suddenly we are able to do smaller babies with smaller weights, bigger ducts, and with less embolization. But the thing which we did not expect was that the total occlusion rate was less. And I think it has something to do with the core of these uh, coils. There are, by the way, there are the same coils from the same company, but the core diameter of the Janturku coil is 0 0.03 inch, uh, 8 inches, while for the detachable coil, 0.035 inches. And I think it matters. And you see, when you worked with this, you know that the Janturku coil is more compact, while the detachable coil is more uh, flimsy. Now, already 1999, the European registry, uh, they, they discovered that most people will use the detachable coil and left behind Janturku coil, while the duct occlude came slowly uh, in appearance. So we ended having these uh, coils working with, I think in the United States they still use the Janturku coil, but they rather use one which is, has a core diameter of 0 0.052 inches, which is more compact, and there are papers showing that the uh, that the residual rate is much less than with the others, which for me also doesn't make sense. So the detachable coil, if anybody, like in, in uh, other countries than the United States, I don't think it's allowed in the United States, 
uh, other countries, they're using it because it's much uh, safer, obviously. PFM coil, actually, the, the, this is the funny thing, was produced for closure of PDA, while this coil was just done to embolize some vessels. It has a perfect form. It, it does have a problem, though. I'll show you. And then, of course, came the duct occluder, too, with many people are using it instead of coils. And I have to say, in our center, I just went to review 143 cases in six years. Uh, also, about 70% would use the Amplatza family and then less detachable and less the need to occlude. And need to occlude, I'll, I'll explain later why I think it was not used for a small reason. Now, of course, this everybody knows, indications for treatment. If congestive heart failure, then you have to close. And arthritis prophylaxis, I put this big question mark because we know that uh, some of the ducts, they need, don't really need closure for prophylaxis, as had been shown in studies the late, the very, like 20 years ago from Sweden, that actually you don't expect any end arthritis with PDA, especially with the small. Though in the literature, you will find occasionally one case report, uh, one very uh, largely quoted by Balzer, I don't know when, was 25 years ago, that a silent PDA led to end arthritis. But this is otherwise uh, very, very rare to expect. So it's unclear. Of course, irreversible is contraindication for uh, closure or active end arthritis. Now, factors important for coil selection. Size of the duct. And in most papers, you'll find that by size, usually they mean the narrowest diameter. And actually, we published also paper uh, like measuring the narrowest diameter and coming up to some uh, conclusion. But we know the type matters. It's not only one size. There are much more to look at. Of course, the weight of the patient also of importance. And at the end, very important is always the ex expertise. How many ducts did you close? What, when you have completely different decision-making uh, when you close, we have closed 200 and while or the other one will have closed only 20. We did this study long ago, uh, try to understand what is the mean narrowest diameter in 117 patients. And we found that there are within this range. And actually, this range is the range for coil closure. So according to this, 50% of these ducts could have been closed with coils. But of course, we measure many things. So this is the narrowest diameter. We measured the length is important and the aortic diameter is as important. The reason for that being that when you position the coil, you have sometimes no say about whether the coil will be in a vertical alignment, and this is where we would love them to be, or in horizontal alignment. You can rotate, sometimes it doesn't work, so it comes only in one alignment, like in this case, clearer scene. So it means that the length is of importance because if you choose a coil diameter, which is, uh, let's say, seven millimeter, so you, you, the, the, the coil diameter has to be less than seven, so it is within the uh, ampulla. Or if you have a shorter, uh, the shorter uh, duct, like three millimeter, and you put a 6.5 coil, it's too large, so it will protrude into, the, that's why all these measurements are of importance. Now, this is of course no science. I'm just saying my own opinion that if you have, this is uh, the this description, uh, a, a brief description by Krichenko, and uh, this is like this short coronal shape. I think you can use either. And then this one with more complex shape, they call here type D, with two narrowing, you can use both. And of course, this one, you can use anything. Where you have corners, you can really put anything. And I think very important is the idea that 
when you close a PDA, the best devices has been uh, the, the plug, the postman plug the first. So they just put something inside and 100%. So I believe like if you fill the ampulla as much as it, uh, it's, it's best to have complete closure because this is our aim and not just having 90% uh, closure. So of course it matters, so this is the type, but you have to combine it with the diam narrows diameter of uh, the PDA. So the detachable coil, uh, 2.5 millimeter is okay, three occasionally, but you start already heading towards what we used to do. We put one, two, three, in one occasion with seven coils to fill the duct, which is of course, at that time we didn't have something else because the Rashkin was abruptly uh, not produced anymore. So we had only this one. So it doesn't make sense. So I think this is very reasonable while the PFM coil can go up to four millimeter. Now, another thing is when you put the coil, if when you measure the narrowest diameter, of course, the, the coil diameter needs to be twice as large as the narrowest diameter. And this has been accepted uh, throughout. Of course, it's never, nothing is 100%. Now, the John Turco coil, I will not talk about because not really many uh, use it. And I just depicted here the differences. It's the same, stainless steel, Dacron fibers here. But this here, the beauty of this, that it's interlocking screw between a delivery wire and the coil itself. And you see this here, screw-like mechanism. But inside, there is also a mandrane, which is also of importance for uh, the detachable coils. Many different sizes, and very important, which confused us at the beginning, because Gentoko coil gave numbers, and the numbers were completely different from this. Here, the first number is the coil diameter, while this here, the loop number. The Gentoko, they gave you two numbers, which one, the stretch diameter, which uh, was confusing at the beginning, and we made some mistakes with that. Now, important for today, all devices we implant need to be MRI compatible, and this goes actually for the Cook detachable coil as well as for the PFM coil. And of course, some image artifacts are always expected. Now, to release the mechanism of the Cook detachable coil, I try to depict it here. So you have this screw on this wire, which you have to like, like bring together with part of the coil, but there is also a mandarin inside. And it's very important, it happened to me many times that w before you uh, release the coil, occasionally what happened that we uh, withdrawn completely the mandarin. And when we tried to unscrew more, it break up, like this part would break up. And uh, it's terrifying, but I mean, uh, happily nothing happens really, but you have to be aware what happened. Anyway, uh, so, so this is very important that until the last second, you should leave some mandre inside and it, it, it holds the, the coil and then you can uh, unscrew completely, changing color for some reason. Okay, now I hope this works. Can you press on it, should work. Now, the autogram is essential for the duct. They should actually work uh, alone, but anyway, you know how it is. Either we use, uh, lateral is very important for the smaller duct. For the slightly moderate duct, uh, we need uh, AP, but mostly REO would be more of, uh, of interest. Unfortunately, I cannot show this here. Now, for the, for the uh, un not detachable coil, many techniques have been developed, but if you put it uh, possibly the most, both important, some people, they tend to go anterograde from the pulmonary artery into the aorta, some retrograde, and there's not much difference. I prefer anterograde because it's much more uh, steerable. You can position the coil where you want it to be. Some examples. Happily, this works. So you see, positioning the, the, you put an angel in the lateral view. Now here, this should work also. 
and then you advance a catheter. It's very simple, and through the catheter, uh, a delivery catheter, you advance uh, the the coils. And with each, uh, you have to pull back the mandarin so a new loop develops. And you have to choose how many loops you want. For example, uh, we discovered that actually five by five is actually very commonly used, or 6.5 by four. <laughs> so you will deploy most of the loops inside the ampulla and just half or one, uh, one loop in the pulmonary artery. And then you release, and after the release, sorry, you should see here something. Move. It was moving before. Uh, then you see that actually this is perfect position for Koi. Now it's work. Okay, with tam, some residual. And because of the filament attached to this, uh, the coil, there is not much residual leak after release if you chose the right coil. Now this one we can argue about whether you should close it or not. And uh, we, we would not do it. We closed it in this case uh, if we discover by chance. But a silent duct we don't close anymore. Uh, and ages ago, we used to balloon dilate it and put a Rashkin device, which is absolute crazy if you think about it. And I will never forgive myself for that anymore. But at that time, everybody said silent duct should be closed. I think they should not, unless you find it by chance. It's just a sport. In that case, actually, it's uh, nice to show uh, because this is the difference between putting coils and amplats. But unfortunately, I cannot uh, show it to you. It's, the, it's a conal shaped PDA, a very small narrow diameter, like less than two millimeter. And we positioned uh, the coil in this way. And uh, we, I, we show, we show, I wanted to show you how to move back the mandarin whenever you have this loop. And then uh, unscrew after you do some anjou to make sure. And this here, the anjou after release, perfect position. And I want to show it to you, and this baby, by the way, was not a baby, it was a three years old child. Next day, this is what we got. And we, we could retrieve the coil, but the issue is, when we did an angel, can, can you press, try to make them uh, play, please, this, the loops? Uh, when we did the angel, we discovered the PDA grew at least twice as big. And I think this will happen less with Amplatzer because Amplatzer like stretches the whole duct while the coil adapts itself to the duct. And actually unexpected because this is a three years old, I thought the duct doesn't move anymore, but actually unfortunately it did in this case. And we put here an Amplatzer device. I'm sorry for that. Now, the PFM nitoclute coil has an outer coil wire wound around an inner coil, as you see here. Not only that, the coil stiffness, I tried to show it with, the, with this arrow, the coil stiffness increases from pulmonary artery to aortic side. So here is more stiffer than on this side. Hence, when you pull at it, it's easy adapt itself to uh, the conal shape of the duct. So the biconical shape suitable for most ducts, because we know 70% of the ducts are actually conal shaped. It has uh, different uh, sizes, uh, MRI compatible. It's easy retrievable. When coil is in optimum position, it's released uh, and activate its uh, mechanism. I tried to find, uh, of course, this is how you select your coil. The distal coil diameter should three, be three to four millimeter larger than D1, which is this one here, narrows diameter. And the proximal coil should not be more than two millimeter uh, than D2, which is from the Arctic. So anyway, this Andrew showing a uh, duct, it's, it's silly. But here we see the, this was a duct uh, of the, with two narrowing, two stenosis. And uh, we see after releasing of the duct, actually it fitted itself beautifully to the, uh, the form of the duct, as we see it here uh, very nicely with no residual leak. 
Now, this is the, another one where it's showing very important that we have to be accurate with our measurements. And uh, because when we positioned the duct, it was quite large protruding into uh, the aorta. This is, it doesn't help much, nothing is working. And this one uh, had a, a, a duct with a very large ampulla, and I think the PFM coil fits best for this very large ampulla, which we can call convex type. And you see here, after release, it just fit exactly into the uh, form of the duct. Of course, you don't have to believe me, <laughs> because you don't see uh, anything. <laughs> anyway, another one showing, I'm, I'm really very sorry, because they, they did work. Anyway, sorry for that. 